realagriculture.com's coverage of Canada's Farm Progress Show in Regina, Saskatchewan is brought to you by Morris. We hear you. Now, Precision Act 2.0 is, if you look, you have to look a little bit into the history that precision agriculture really took off in the last 18, 20 years. And now we have access to a lot of technologies that were not previously available to us. Also, the scientists in the university environment have had chance to collect a lot of information and data and make translate into better management decision. In Precision 2.0, I would imagine that a lot of deficiencies that are in place. For example, there are crop uh, sensing or sensors available in the market, several of those, but most of them would give you one or two index, okay? And they're primarily for either quantifying biomass or nitrogen in the crop. But it does nothing for phosphorus or potassium or calcium, magnesium, boron, zinc, you know, a lot of other elements, or even pest infestation or water stress or disease infestation. All we get is a lower value if the plant is not doing so well. And so what my hope is that in Precision Agriculture 2.0, we'll have newer set of sensing devices or technological innovation that will really bridge the gap where things were in the last 18, 20 years and how far we have come forward and go on to a next step. Uh, robotics is the next big thing in agriculture in general and I would again want to go back a little bit that when precision agriculture started we started focusing too much on row crops like corn and corn was traditionally only two two dollars a bushel I think we have learned the hard way that that necessarily is not a a very good crop to start with uh, and so using our experiences that we have learned the hard way, the new technological innovations that are happening are happening with high value crops or with, uh, with tree crops and things like that. So in my presentation I talked about machine vision or robotic interventions. I would imagine and I see in, in several laboratories where they're doing this kind of work, it's happening more with high value crops. Uh, in, in orchards environment where the, you know, it's one fixed plant or tree uh, that they can acquire a lot of information about and see it grow and make a better decision. Um, that's a good question. Uh, every When you are uh, working with cutting edge technology, not everybody jumps onto it. Uh, there are things that are not completely uh, figured out. so. Uh, there are a lot of trials and we learn uh, as we go or work with those new technologies. It's not just with robotics, but happens with pretty much every technology. So I'm not quite sure if farmers would jump on it, but I would imagine that large operations who have pretty large labor cost and when the harvest has to happen, it has to happen right now before it gets infested or uh, damaged by weather uh, elements and things like that. And, and so I would imagine those would be the first ones to imbibe some of these new innovations that we're going to see now and in future. I don't have much experience with canola, but I can share with you um, there's a new uh, terminology that is now being used called phenotyping. Okay? Uh, genotyping has been around for a uh, number of years, but the phenotyping is a, is a new concept. And what uh, plant breeders and geneticists are doing, they're trying to study the phenology of the plant. Uh, how early in the growing season can they identify traits in new varieties uh, that they are looking for, either higher, higher biomass for energy or um, higher biomass for more grain production. So we have a project going on in, in Colorado where we have been screening 24 wheat genotypes using active suite of active sensors. And the idea is how early in the growing season I can identify which particular wheat variety is going to outperform the rest. Okay. Now, it, you may know that plant breeding and variety development is a colossal task. Okay. You have um, 
genetics and you have environment that, that's come into play. So it's very normal for plant breeders to have hundreds and thousands of evaluating plots before they identify and make it into a commercial variety. So these kind of interventions, technological innovations, going into plant breeding or phenotyping is very new. Okay, and it, it brings it a completely new dimension of us thinking about crop sensing for nutrient management versus crop sensing for varietal development. Um, I would say yes. Um, now, I know like Germany, Australia, uh, there are state-run um, institutes or research institutions or universities that are investing heavily into phenotyping research. Um, and I'm sure there are some in U.S. or North America. But from that perspective, it is more uh, being done within an industry. Okay, um, and I, I don't want to take any names here, but yes, a lot of work is being done here in North America, but primarily within uh, large organizations, so private more organizations. Along the genetic side. More along the genetic side, exactly right. All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much.